And today, the U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments in two cases that is likely impact all students thinking of applying for college this year and students applying in the future. The cases are about college admissions and affirmative action. An organization called Students for Fair Admissions filed two separate suits against two universities, one against the University of North Carolina and another against Harvard University. The case against UNC claims that the college is subject to Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Law. And the case against Harvard claims that the university's admission policy violates Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The High Court will decide whether colleges and universities may take a person's race into account as a factor for admissions. During the hearing for the case against UNC, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson clashed with a lawyer for the student group seeking to end affirmative action in college admissions. Justice Brown Jackson challenged whether the group has standing to sue, in other words, whether that group is harmed by the policy or not. According to reports, the newest appointed justice said that the student group did not demonstrate any instances where admission offices looked at race as a sole factor. She said, quote, they are looking at the full person. Student for Fair Admissions lawyer Patrick Strawbridge then agreed that race is almost never the sole factor, but that it helps tip that, that factor for some applicants. Interesting side note, earlier this year, Justice J Brown Jackson said she would recuse herself on the second case against Harvard. That is perhaps due to the fact that she is a Harvard College and Law School graduate and, se and served as a six-term member of Harvard's Board of Overseers until last spring. One of her children is also a student at Harvard. In questioning at her confirmation hearing, she said that she would recuse herself from this case when it goes to the Supreme Court. We do not know if she actually recused herself or not. We reached out to her, the Supreme Court's Public Information Office, for a confirmation, but we have not heard back yet. Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law School and author of The Price of Principle, Alan Dershowitz, joins me. Good evening, sir. And with the changed makeup of the court and the advance of time, um, do you see this uh, as a, going to be a landmark decision on affirmative action or not, these two cases? I think it will be. It's coming a half a century too late. Back in the 1970s, the most liberal person in the history of the Supreme Court, Justice Douglas, said that race could not be taken into account, could not count. In 1979, I, liberal, wrote a uh, influential article, uh, uh, critical of Bakke, saying race could not be taken into account, affirmatively or negatively, uh, that you have to come up with criteria that are non-racial. Now, what we heard in the Supreme Court today is an incredible amount of inconsistency and hypocrisy. You get the people who are arguing in favor of Harvard, and you know, I was there for 50 years, and I, I like the admissions people very much. They were saying, uh, you know, race doesn't really matter. It really doesn't count. It really is very, very little importance. And then they said, but if you eliminate race, the country won't survive. The, the Basically, the Solicitor General uh, made a parade of horribles of what would happen if race could not be taken into account. But if race is taken into account, you have the following situation. Uh, the son or daughter of a hedge fund person uh, worth a billion dollars, whose mother is a federal judge, who went to the fanciest prep schools in Exeter, who had all kind of prep courses and all kind of tutoring, gets slightly lower grades than a kid from Appalachia uh, who has struggled with uh, parents who are on opiates and managed to, by the work of his brow, get there and has slightly better grades, if you can take race into account, then the rich black kid gets an advantage over the poor white kid. That's not what the framers of our Constitution had in mind, and that's not going to lead us to colorblindness. You can take into account discrimination. You can take into account a history of overcoming prejudice, of bad neighbors, all of that. But you cannot take into account only the color of one's skin. And by the way, it's not only the color of one's skin because some African-Americans are indistinguishable from non-African-Americans on the basis of skin color. It's their ethnicity. They identify as African-Americans, and they should. They should be very proud of it. But these factors are irrelevant to academic institutions and shouldn't be allowed to be taken into account. If you want true diversity, start admitting uh, evangelical Christians, people who support guns, people who uh, 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 oppose affirmative action, but schools are prepared to cancel those people. So I, I don't believe that these universities are interested in intellectual academic uh, diversity. They're interested only in having a photograph that shows 
a significant number of people. And it's a quota system, because if it goes below 13 percent, there are protests. And remember, this all started with when there were, quote, too many Jews admitted to Harvard in the 1920s. And this came up during the argument today, because if some group is underrepresented, like blacks, then some groups are overrepresented by definition, Asian Americans, Jewish Americans. And that's how it all started, by President Lowell of Harvard trying to reduce the number of, quote, overrepresented Jews. You can't have a system where the admission parallels the, 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 the ethnic nature of our yeah. society. Try that with immigration. Th Wrong. In 2003, in a case, um, uh, Justice Roberts, now Chief Justice Roberts, uh, said he, he sort of envisioned a 25-year timeline to uh, on affirmative action so that we could sort of, you know, we sort of correct things in terms of trying to get a, a better balance in schools. Um, at, we're almost at that 25-year period, so I'm wondering. You know, I wonder if we're going to hear from from Justice Thomas on that when he writes the decision, if he when he participates in these two cases. Well, it was Justice O'Connor who used the 25 years, and Justice Thomas thought she was wrong back then. I thought she was wrong back then. I don't think you have time limits on discrimination or time allowances on discrimination. But does it show a difference in opinion? But I mean, I mean, like, does it show, I mean, the, the court uh, the court has changed a lot in the last, since yeah. Bakke was the 1978 case you referred to, but a lot has happened since then. A lot, it, I mean, even it, the composition of the court has changed dramatically. Right. And it may be that this decision, although it's the right decision, will be based on the wrong criteria, namely that there's been a change of justices in the Supreme Court. I only wish Justice Douglas was still on the Supreme Court and could have a strong liberal voice, as I hope I have a strong liberal voice against racial discrimination, whether it's positive or negative. That's the liberal position. The radical progressive position is you can take race into account and you can create covers for it. My colleague, Professor Lawrence Tribe, already said to Harvard, you're going to lose this. Create ways of circumventing it. Figure out ways of getting around this which is what people in the South said about Brown versus Board of Education. No, you don't figure out ways of getting around this. You figure out ways of living with it. Create criteria that have to do with financial, psychological, other factors that are relevant, but not the factor of race alone, which is constitutionally uh, irrelevant. Well, this one's going to be another hot potato when the court decides this one. Professor yep. Dershowitz, thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I hope the opinion isn't leaked in advance. That's all I can say. <laughs>